Hi everybody, Jager Breed here from ReviewEcon.com. We are going to be going over set two of the macroeconomics exam for 2023. These are my best guest answers. The questions were just released a few hours ago. I went through and did the best I could to come up with what I think are probably going to be the answers that are accepted for this year's rubric. Uh, I did the best I can, but I don't know for sure what the rubrics are going to say. I'm just basing my answers on previous rubrics and my knowledge of micro and macroeconomics, in this case macro, and we'll see, we'll see when the rubrics come out, how well I did. Um, and that's pretty much it. Let's let's jump into the questions. By the way, before we do that, please like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and most importantly, let your friends who are taking micro or macroeconomics next year know about ReviewEcon.com. Tell them about the resources, uh, and so that we can we can continue to grow this thing. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, let's get into what I hope to be the answers here. So. Uh, We've got the uh, economy of Northland is in short run equilibrium. They have an actual unemployment rate of 7% and an actual inflation rate of 1%, while the natural rate of unemployment in Northland is 5%. We are going to use the numeric values that we have here and draw a correctly labeled graph of the long run and short run Phillips curves with the current point labeled X. So here is my graph here. We have the uh, 5% natural rate of unemployment below the long run Phillips curve and along the short run Phillips curve at a higher unemployment rate we have the 7% we have the 7% point labeled there uh, and point X down there to the right of the intersection between the two curves and we have the current inflation rate at at uh, 1% there labeled all right moving on to the next question Part B is the expected inflation rate greater than, less than, or equal to 1%. Remember, the, net, uh, the expected inflation rate is actually found at the intersection between the long run and short run Phillips curves. And since we were below that intersection, that means that the, uh, that the actual expected inflation rate is greater than the 1%. So here's my answer. It's greater than because when the unemployment rate is greater than the natural rate, the inflation rate will be less than the expected inflation rate. And uh, point X is, and I'm adding the intersection portion. I don't know exactly what they're going to be looking for here, but I, so I added a little more. The point X is below the intersection of the LRPC and the SRPC, and that is where that expected inflation rate is found. So I think that'll give me the point. I don't know exactly how much of this they'll expect, but we'll find out when the rubric comes out. All right, for part C, we're going to assume that the marginal propensity to consume is 0.9, and we need to know if the government decreases income taxes by $20 billion, we're going to calculate the maximum change in aggregate demand, and we'll show our work. Remember, aggregate demand, real GDP changes, they're gonna be the same thing here. It's the amount of the aggregate demand shift. So the tax multiplier, first we're going to figure that out. We have a negative 0.9 divided by 0.1 to give us a tax multiplier of negative 9. That gives us a maximum change of negative 20 billion times the negative 9. It's a negative here because it's a tax decrease, and that is a $180 billion increase in GDP. I don't think you will need to have the negative value, the negative signs here. I think absolute value will be just fine, but Technically, the tax multiplier is negative, and this is a tax decrease. So, uh, moving on to the next part. In, if instead the government increases spending by 20 billion, calculate the maximum change in aggregate demand and show your work. The, this is now the spending multiplier, so I'm going to recalculate the spending multiplier. One divided by one minus the MPC gives us 10 multiplier for the spending multiplier, and that uh, gives us a maximum change of the $20 billion increase in spending times the 10 multiplier gives us $200 billion increase. All right, moving on to the next part. Part D, on that same graph that we drew earlier of the Phillips curve, we are now going to show a possible short run equilibrium with point Z. All right, so as long as it's higher up on the short run Phillips curve, I think that will be just fine. I went ahead and shifted us back to long run equilibrium. So point Z there at the natural rate and at the expected inflation rate. And But I think any point uh, that is upward on that short run Phillips curve uh, to the left will be just fine. Moving on to the next part. Uh, part, part E, we have uh, the question is, would an increase in the unemployment compensation affect 
the aggregate demand in the short run. Let's and we have to explain this one. So it will increase the uh, aggregate demand because an increase in unemployment compensation would increase consumer spending for unemployed workers. I think you, as long as you have a consumer spending uh, connection here with the increase, I think that will be enough for the explain point. On to the next part. Uh, we're going to assume that instead the government takes none of the preceding actions that we just saw, uh, and we have to explain what will happen to the short run aggregate supply curve in the long run and explain. So what's going to happen? Well, the short run aggregate supply curve is going to increase or shift to the right, and that's because wages or other input prices would decrease. I believe wages will be just fine, but if you mention other input prices, that's okay too. All right, moving on to the next part. We're going to uh, also say what would happen to the short run Phillips curve. And as we just saw, we saw an increase in the short run aggregate supply curve or a shift to the right. That means the Phillips curve, because they're mirrored, is going to shift to the left. Shift to the left is going to be your answer here, I expect. Moving on to the next part. What will happen to the actual unemployment rate? Well, the actual unemployment rate is going to decrease because as those prices fall, we're going, or as wages fall, more workers are going to be hired thanks to the short run aggregate supply curve shifting to the right, increasing real output. So the unemployment rate decreases, but you don't have to explain it, just say decrease. Moving on to the next part, we've got uh, question number two. We're going to, uh, we have the United States and South Africa, they're trading partners with flexible exchange rates, and both countries have a current account balance of zero, which may also, by the way, means that our uh, financial and capital account also has a balance of zero. We're going to assume that real income and in the United States increases while real income in South Africa remains the same. Will United States net exports increase, decrease, or remain unchanged? And we need to explain. Well, if the United States has more national income, American citizens are going to buy more of everything, including foreign made goods. So we are going to see a decrease in net exports because when we import more goods from South Africa, remember imports are subtracted from exports to get net exports, and that means that our uh, net exports are going to decrease. And so my explanation is because imports from South Africa will increase. Moving on to the next part, based on your answer in part A, what will happen to each of the following? The capital and financial account in the United States. Well, we are going to have an increase in the capital and financial account or it will become a surplus. And that is because we had a decrease in the current account as a result of the increase in net X or in the increase of imports. All right, moving on to the next part, the actual unemployment rate in South Africa in the short run. Explain, we are going to see a decrease in the unemployment rate within South Africa, and that's because the increase in imports will shift aggregate demand curve, the aggregate demand curve for South Africa, to the right, increasing real output in South Africa. I don't know for sure if they're going to re require the connection to aggregate demand, but when in doubt, connect it to the graph in your explanation as much as possible. So that's what I've got going on here. Moving on to the next part, we're going to, uh, we're, now we're looking at the currency, the currency of the United States, is the dollar or the US dollar and the currency in South Africa is the RAND, uh, which is also Z-A-R. I decided not to even bother with the abbreviation, so here I have, it's the quantity of the dollar and the quantity of RAND. Maybe I should have uh, read that more carefully. I actually didn't notice it until I just uh, pulled this up. Uh, but uh, so maybe I should have the quantity of the czar, but I think it'll be just fine. So we have uh, the quantity. So we have an increase in the demand here. Uh, for the South African currency, which causes the South African currency to appreciate. Now we're moving on to question number three. We're going to assume that the economy of country Zen is in long run equilibrium, and we're going to draw a correctly labeled graph of the ASAD model and mark the current level of output, price level, and full employment level of output. And there we have it. They are at long run equilibrium, so YF and Y1 are equal, and we have PL1 marked at the current equilibrium. Moving on to the next part. On your graph in part A, we're going to show the effect of an increase in consumer confidence. Increase uh, When consumers are more confident, we are going to see more consumer spending, and that's going to increase the aggregate demand curve, shifting it to the right, increasing our price level, and increasing our output to Y2 there. Moving on to the part C, we're going to assume that the banking system in Zen has ample reserves. One more question about ample reserves. We got one in set one as well. And we're going to suppose that the 
uh, central bank's goal is to maintain a stable price level at PL1. So we just saw an increase in the price level. We need to lower it back down. And of course, that change happens through fighting inflation. And so we have to identify a fiscal policy action or excuse me, not fiscal, monetary policy action that the central bank can take. And that will be an increase in interest on reserves or you could also say administered rates. Either one of those will be acceptable, I expect. On to part D, we're going to base it, our answer on the monetary policy uh, that we just identified. Will real output increase, decrease, or stay the same? And we have to explain our reasoning here. It will decrease, and that's because the increasing interest on reserves will increase the policy rate, which decreases gross investment and other interest rate sensitive spending, which then decreases aggregate demand. All right, and that's it. Those are my best guess answers for the 2003 macroeconomics exam questions. Uh, if you didn't get either set one or set two, there's a chance you got one of the questions that will not be released. And that's just the luck of the draw. Uh, nothing we can do about that. Uh, those, they'll, they'll probably never be released and we can't discuss them as a result. Uh, but I'm sure you did great. I'm sure you did great. If you understand these questions, I'm, uh, I, I'm confident you're going to do okay. Scores come out uh, at, some at some point in the summer. I hope you did well. Thank you again very much for supporting ReviewEcon.com. You all take care. See you all next time.